Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 2 to the power z equals negative square root of 2. Man, if only we had something like this, 2 to the power z equals root 2, right? Then it will be fairly easy to solve. Why? Because you could immediately say, hey, root 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half from here z equals 1 half. And of course, um, there are two numbers, right? Are there? Well, there are two numbers whose square equals uh, the same complex number, but when it comes to the square roots, there should only be one answer. Anyways, if we had this, then z would be 1 half. But of course, you could always multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi and i, which is 1 in the complex world. So you could also write this equation a little differently, okay? Just by adding the 2 pi and i into the equation. But that's a different story. We're going to have to deal with a minus sign here, which is going to bring in some interesting results. By the way, we've done a similar problem before. Do you remember? Recently. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. How do we solve these kinds of problems? So we can go ahead and actually write the 2 as e to the power ln 2. And then that'll be raised to the power z, and we have negative root 2. So this is going to give us e to the power z ln 2. And now, on the right-hand side, I have a number that needs to be complexified. What do I mean by that? I want to write this number in polar form. Remember, in the argon plane, you can pretty much graph any or plot any complex number, and then that allows you also to write it in polar form. For example, negative root 2, what is it going to look like? It's going to be on the real axis, on the negative side, this is the imaginary axis. And then its distance from 0 is just going to be root 2 units, which we call r or the modulus or the absolute value. And then there's something called the argument. And let me go ahead and you already know that the distance or r is going to be root 2. Let's go ahead and talk about the argument. The argument is the angle that it makes with the positive real axis. In this case, that will be pi radians. Make sense? Of course, pi is not the only argument, it's just the principal argument for this complex number, but the argument function is basically multi-valued. There are infinitely many angles that give us the exact same complex number. The complex number is unique in that sense, like negative root 2 is not multi-valued, it's single-valued, but there are multiple representations of it. For example, pi could be used, or we could use a 3 pi or a 5 pi or any odd multiple of pi for that reason. Make sense? So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to write this as r e to the i theta. Remember, that's the polar form for any complex number with modulus r and argument theta. So in this case, our modulus is root 2 and angle is pi. But then don't forget to add multiples of 2 pi, which gives you basically the odd multiples of um, pi. So let's go ahead and bring it over here. So we have, oh, we kind of have more room. I can kind of put it over here, maybe something like this. And we can go ahead and complete the picture. So what am I going to multiply by? First, I will be on the outside. Theta is 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi. So you can definitely write this as pi i2 if you want to erase this and write it that way. That's fine as well. Okay. So we got a really nice equation, and again, I'm going to carry this because I don't want it to mix with the other stuff. Here we go. We left a dot there. And now we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides, and that's going to give us z ln 2 equals, when you ln root 2, we'll simplify that next, and then this is going to be a product. So when you ln a product, what is ln ab? It is ln a plus ln b, and this is also true for complex numbers. And guess what? ln root 2 is a real valued function or just a real ln. Okay, it's just a numerical value. Plus uh, ln e is 1, so this can be written as 2n plus 1, which is a, represents an odd number times pi times i. Some people will write the i before uh, because usually in the trigonometric form, that's how they do it, like cosine theta plus i sine theta. But with the a plus b i form, which is the name of this channel, by the way, right? Uh, you can write it that way too. Same thing. So now let's go ahead and find z from here. 
let's divide everything by ln2. We're going to get something like this. And 2n plus 1 pi over ln2 multiplied by i. Now, notice that n is an integer. Did I say that? I probably forgot, but you probably knew that n is an integer and you can vary the values. So you can basically replace n with anything you want as long as it's an integer. But here's the interesting part of this problem, this piece. That's the real part, right? So what about the real part? If you remember going back to the very beginning, I told you that, okay, what if we had something like this? Then I said, okay, Z is just going to be one half, right? Okay, it's not imaginary, it's not, uh, it's real, so there are real solutions, but there are also non-real solutions, right? Let's get back to it uh, here. We're going to get something interesting from here, let me tell you. Root 2 can be written as ln 2 to the power 1 half, and then from here, we can basically move this to the front, and that's where, where we get our real part as 1 half. So yes, uh, 1 half is not a solution, but the solution has one half as the real part because this is going to become one half ln2 divided by ln2 and then plus, can I write the i first? It just keeps bugging me. 2n plus 1 pi for some reason, I don't know why. And then we can kind of write it like this. This is my z and now the ln2 can be canceled out and now I can write my z as one half plus i times 2n plus 1 pi divided by ln2. Now we said if only we had root 2, we don't have it. We have a negative number on the right hand side. That's why we had to get a non-real solution. But can we make the imaginary part disappear? That's going to be a million dollar question, right? Not really. It's easy. You can't because odd number cannot be zero. You need to make it zero to get rid of the imaginary piece. Obviously pi is not zero, i is not zero. 1 over ln2 cannot be 0. The only thing that can be 0 is 2n plus 1. But if 2n plus 1 is 0, n needs to be negative 1 half. But that's not going to happen because n is an integer. Therefore, this is impossible, which means that we're stuck with a complex number. But that's perfectly fine because, come on, this channel is all about complex numbers. So it's normal to get complex solutions, right? I mean, non-real complex solutions. When we say complex numbers, I mean, 2 is a complex number too, right? but we prefer to say or call it a real number. Great, so we get this as the final answer. And again, the real part kind of reflects the positive version of this problem. I don't know if I included the result from Wolfram Alpha. I probably forgot. Yay, I didn't. Okay, great, awesome. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.